for uh, Spatial Networks in Tampa, Florida. And uh, I'm here to talk about uh, an iOS app that me and Coleman, who's sitting here, who also works with me, uh, we made to edit uh, POI data in OpenStreetMap. And uh, it started as a, just an idea that we had out of our local OpenStreetMap group that's actually about four or five people usually come to our meetups. <laughs> um, we had an idea to create a simple editor, and this isn't really um, anything new. There's been other tools that do uh, POI editing. There's one that uh, called MapZen that used to exist that is no more. Um, but we wanted to create something newer that was simpler and more uh, up to date. Uh, so really what we set out to do was build something that was really easy to use. Um, something you can use when you're going uh, out to eat or walking down the street with your friends or you know, basically anything when you're out, out and about. Um, so there's definitely some uh, important things to consider when building something that you use when you're on your phone as opposed to when you're on your uh, laptop or desktop. Um, it needs to be really, really simple to use or else nobody will use it. So um, there's definitely some things that I will talk about on how we approach that. But mostly it's about keeping it fun and, and simple. Really that's the, that's the most important thing. <coughs> And uh, here's a, just a brief introduction. Here's the website that one of our guys hacked up uh, the night before it got approved by Apple. Um, this is actually mostly data added by me and Coleman uh, near where we live in Hells County, in Hillsborough County, uh, in Tampa, Florida. Um, this is all data that we actually added using the app. So we did field test it quite a bit. Um, and actually, POI data, just names of places, business listing type stuff, is actually really, really awful pretty much everywhere in our state. And best I can tell, it's pretty awful everywhere except for the heavily edited you know, areas in OpenStreetMap, which are the most urban centers and stuff like that. But even in those areas, it's still uh, pretty sparse when you compare it to a data set like that Google uses to power their search engine and stuff. So, um, I think it would be cool to to make ours much better. Um, so why why would we build this? Well, that was some of it, but mostly uh, I want to increase the casual users of OpenStreetMap. Um, there isn't there isn't a lot of casual usage of OpenStreetMap that I've found. Um, I've tried and we tried introducing it to our friends and family and stuff, and it's it's hard because the first question they ask is why, which I don't, I don't know how to answer that one. I mean, that's, that's really a messaging thing that uh, the project, I think, could definitely improve on. But um, that's out of, out of scope of what I can do because I'm just a software guy. So. Um, but uh, the, the main thing that I think we can do is build simpler tools and make it easier to contribute to the project. Um, and I think the lowest technical barrier sort of or technical data that you could enter into the system is, is business name type stuff. So, and that's one of the things that's lacking the most in the database in my opinion. The roads are actually pretty good in OpenStreetMap across most of the US. But, so routing is possible, like he was talking about earlier in the keynote, you can route, but you don't have any, there's not very many places to route to. If you search on OpenStreetMap, there's nothing, you know, there's like, don't quote me on this, but there's, you know, a hundred McDonald's in the entire database or whatever. So if someone wants to know that, you know, there's not an easy way to, to get that. So, um, and I think that is information that uh, mere mortals could help enter into the database. You don't have to know how to create a multi-polygon in order to enter a McDonald's or a Starbucks into the database. So I think there's a lot to be done to uh, bring some people that aren't mappers but still be able to collect valuable information that they have that can key in an address or a name of a place, the zip code, and help improve things like the geocoder and stuff. Um, here's a little cheesy graphic I made. Uh, so, and he made a much more uh, in-depth graphic of this sort of story, but you have casual people that, you know, 
don't really don't really care about uh, the intricacies of the database and so forth. Um, but they have they can I think they have valuable information to add. Uh, and then over here you have the more formal people, probably us, you know, who are in Jossum uh, doing crazy stuff that most people probably wouldn't be able to do, or probably never would care to do. I think it's a pipe dream to think that everybody can is going to be interested in, in editing the map and that level of detail. So, uh, like he had mentioned, I think there's room for simpler tools that normal people can use to help contribute uh, really valuable information that isn't there right now. <clears throat> So how is it built? Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, it's all built using the, the editing API, the same thing that Potlatch uses, the same thing that Jocelyn uses. Uh, it's mainly built around, this app is mainly built around four kind of key uh, interfaces of the API. The top one is the map call, so you pass it for you know, the bounding area of the map that you want to fetch and it'll give you back everything in that area. And there's some other specific rules about it. It'll, it'll return things that are outside of the area, like relations and ways that are connected and so forth. So you don't break things that are just outside or overlapping the area. And then there's a change set call. So every, every single edit in OpenStreetMap is, at least, you have to make at least three calls in order to make one edit to the map. You have to create a change set, and then do something inside of the change set, delete, add, edit, and then close the change set. So uh, the app uses those three calls to make, uh, make changes sort of one at a time um, uh, to, the, to the POI data. <clears throat> and down here is an example of, of actually the payload that gets sent up to the server if nobody's ever seen it, maybe. Uh, so you have your, you know, your standard uh, latitude, longitude, the user ID. I'm still not quite sure what the visible thing means. Maybe, maybe do you know what that is? It just means it hasn't been deleted. Oh, okay. That's that's new to me. I saw it there. I was like, all right, well, it needs that. So, and I see it in the queries filtering it out, but I don't know really what it does. Uh, every every node has a version, so it's all it's all tracked. Um, and then the tags are pretty straightforward. You have a key and a value, and uh, it goes all the way down uh, to whatever tags are attached to that node. And then the change set is closed after you add that, uh, after you create or edit the node, you close the change set and it's done. Uh, to build the actual map interface, the Slippy map, uses a project called Open Source Project called RouteMe. Uh, it has nothing to do with routing. I don't know why they named it that. It's a horrible <laughs> name. Um, it makes absolutely no sense. Maybe the original author had something in mind that it doesn't do. But uh, really what it is is it's a tiling, a map tiling viewer. Just like uh, on the web you have leaflet and open layers and so forth. But this one's implemented uh, in native code on uh, iOS. <clears throat> And it's open source. There's the, the repo. It's a pretty slow moving project, actually. Uh, and because it's so slow moving, uh, it's actually been forked many times and, and modified. And Justin from Mapbox, I don't think he's in here right now, but uh, they have a project, uh, the Mapbox iOS SDK, uh, which is a, essentially a complete rewrite of this uh, using some. Uh, different techniques that make it a little smoother panning and tile loading and so, and so forth. And uh, I hope we'll be able to port that to that pretty soon. <clears throat> so if you're interested in doing anything on iOS with native code and mapping, check this out. And also, I would start actually checking out the, the Mapbox iOS, iOS SDK first. I had started this before that existed, so uh, I had gotten a little too far along and I didn't really want to back out of it yet. I'd rather ship something first. Um, but perhaps the most important thing of the whole app is the way that we, we simplified the, the tagging process in OpenStreetMap. And this is actually one of the most daunting things to new users of OpenStreetMap because we've actually introduced it to our dad. He's gotten casually interested in it, sort of. Um, but it's, 
it's hugely valuable to uh, to me and to all the hardcore people out there because uh, there's a ton of information in here about how to correctly map stuff in OpenStreetMap. Um, and this we use as the basis for the for all the stuff in the app because this is what I would consider to be the the authoritative resource on how to how to map things. <clears throat> And here's just an example of, of kind of the data format that the app uses. It uses a, a JSON representation of this, so we're not actually hard coding anything into the app. It loads these from, it, it loads this file uh, when the app runs. And you can see we tried to abstract some of the goofiness of the tags. And I say goofiness. Uh, some of the things aren't really named very well, I don't think. Uh, the tags, at least, whoops. Uh, um, the way some things are named in there is probably not how I would have named them, but it is what it is, and there's already so many things tagged that way. It's just, uh, we kind of got to go with it, I think. But, we'll, but what we can do and what we try to do is uh, kind of put the, the words in there that people might search for. So you can see like uh, like herbal, shop herbalist. That's not what I would type in if I was looking for that, like a GNC type store or something. I would probably type in vitamins. So put that word in there, herbalist slash vitamins. And maybe that's the term that we use here in the US and maybe it's different in the UK or something, which is why it's like that. Um, shop do it yourself. I probably wouldn't search for do it yourself. I'd just search for home improvement. And that again, maybe that's a US thing, I don't know. But um, so we've kind of put some keywords in these labels um, because we have this little kind of auto-completing search feature built into the app that actually ends up being, after collecting a, a couple thousand records with this thing, actually ends up being the reason why the app is really useful because you can select these tags. Because these really define what all working and then I realized that I needed to do the attribution of it properly, which turned out more work than I thought it was going to be because Bing actually provides this XML feed of their, it's like the metadata for all their imagery. And uh, you read this file and it has, so it has like, that's an example of digital globe. So all these bounding areas are where digital globe needs to be attributed. So as you pan around the map with the imagery, you're really supposed to uh, accumulate the providers of that bounding area and then uh, display that as the attribution, all the people that have contributed imagery in that area. So the app does that properly. I added that in at the 11th hour because I realized it wasn't there. Um, and I ended up actually looking at how Jossum does it because it has a whole code path devoted to just doing this. <coughs> So that was interesting. I wasn't expecting to have to do that. Um, the, the key thing that we kept in mind when making the app was trying to keep it simple, doing kind of one thing and doing it, uh, doing it well. Uh, so an example of that, of keeping things simple, um, is to kind of get rid of, at least in the user interface, obviously in the database things are still going to be tourism equals hotel. But that to me should never appear in a user interface that a casual user would ever see. That's just nonsense. So hotel would be the way that they would, you would present it in the user interface. Um, so keep the database parts out of the user interface. If you start at the database and work to, towards the user interface, you end up with things like that that make the thing clunky and hard to use. So kind of a top-down approach where you kind of start with what you want the user to see and then work, work backwards. Um, intuitive. The app had to be intuitive uh, and easy to use because usually when I'm at a restaurant waiting for my drinks or walking somewhere, I don't really have a lot of time to to do anything, let alone use my phone to enter a complex thing into OpenStreetMap. So keeping the, the, the time it takes to enter data and, and keeping the app 
easy to use is absolutely critical. Or it's, it's really the difference between using it and not using it. So which is getting data or not getting any data. Um, so an example of trying to keep things intuitive is this type field that's in the app. Uh, the type field, it, it auto-completes or has like a filter. So it's, it's a hierarchical view. So it starts with tourism and amenities or whatever. And then within that, so you have kind of a tree view of things uh, that we've distilled the complex schema down into. And then it auto-completes from there. So you type in bar and just boom, you're already there. It's done. Uh, contextual. Uh, this one was a bit tricky to get to get right. There's a lot. There's actually rules built into the app. So this is an iPhone screenshots. Um, so on the left you have a bar. What you get when you see when you enter a bar is you get serves food, internet access, ATM, outdoor seating, smoking, things that would apply to a bar. Uh, so when you're in fast food, you get things that make sense for fast food: the cuisine, the takeout, um, and so forth. And then the the church you get uh, the religion field. So you would never enter a religion on a bar. So why should that even be possible? Mm -hmm. So that's key, though, because if you show everything all at once, it's just it's, it's, it's a mess to have to sift through, especially, like I said, when you are when you're just only have a few minutes to enter it. Um, so and the conditions are all actually defined uh, in, in a JSON format. You can see here, this is the conditions for internet access. So when the type is equal to shopping or bars and cafes, restaurant, office, and so forth. <coughs> Uh, also, it has to be detailed. Um, so you have people that are out on the ground collecting data. You might as well get as much detail as you can while you're out there. Um, so here's, here's some of the attributes that the app collects, um, depending on what type of thing it is. <clears throat> it's quite a few. Uh, and it's quite a few ones that you actually don't see entered very much in five minutes. Um, so I'll move, move faster here. Here's an example on the left of a, an average POI entered from the web. And here's one entered from the ground in less than a minute from the app. You get all this cool stuff. So that's, that's definitely pretty cool for things like the geocoder and so forth. Um, and Nominatum is the geocoder service. If you haven't seen that, that's the OpenStreetMap based geocoder. The app uses it to autocomplete uh, the address, which can be verified or, or erased and, and rewritten. Um, and there's an example of the, the geocoder results. So what's next? Uh, I'd like to get some feedback. Um, and we have gotten some feedback. Some of it's positive. Most of it's positive. Some of it's negative. Um, the negative feedback um, is something like this from some people. <laughs> because it doesn't edit all the things in OpenStreetMap. So you know, how dare you try to build an editor that uh, doesn't allow me to edit relations or you know, polygons and so forth. Um, but we are going to add the ability to uh, edit tags of the closed ways, which is kind of key in heavily edited areas. So that will be coming, I promise. Uh, issue bug reporting stuff will be cool within the app. Uh, Android, hopefully soon. Uh, I have a buddy that will be hopefully doing that. <laughs> uh, stats in the app I think would be pretty neat. Um, and that's something that I think should be added somewhere in OpenStreetMap suite of tools would be really neat, I think. It's a site devoted just to this, especially for people like us who are geeks and stuff. Uh, I want to know what I've edited so I can go brag to them or you know, you guys, I've edited more stuff than you. So <laughs> I think it would be cool. Uh, and also language translation stuff is always always cool. So any issues or feedback, you can put them on this repo here, which is actually the repo for the website. Um, and I'm not sure, maybe this presentation will be downloadable later. I don't know. And that's all I had. Thank you.